In our last video, we used the free networking platform String to take a look at our, the genes that we identified in our papillary renal cell cancer meta-analysis. Again, these were uh, 130 genes that were clustered together in our heat map uh, that demonstrated higher levels of expression of these genes in the more severe forms of the cancer compared to the less severe forms. Not only did we see this difference in the direct comparison, but we also saw a difference in expression levels when you compare these two forms to the normal healthy uh, kidney tissue. Today what we're going to do is we're going to use another platform to look at these 130 genes, and this will be with Pathway Studio. Uh, it is a networking, uh, commercial networking platform uh, owned by Elsevier. Uh, if you ever wanted to get a manuscript online and it was behind a paywall, it was probably them. Uh, the advantage of this company is, as you can imagine, they have a very deep uh, publication database that they can draw from to draw the biology out, probably deeper than any other platform out there. Uh, so this is what we're going to do is we're going to import our 130 genes into Pathway Studio and use their software to now kind of pull out the biology and, you know, t take a closer look at these genes. In order to import our 130 genes into Pathway Studio, it's a pretty easy process, very similar to String. Uh, basically, all we're doing is cut, copying and pasting our gene list in. Um, just like with string, we are not putting in full change information into uh, this program. Um, I'm not going to go through this. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure there's lots of videos out there showing people importing data into Pathway Studio. Um, I have already done this, and given here is my list of genes that we have imported. Um, just like uh, string, it will not recognize necessarily all your genes of interest. So in this case, we have out of 130, it recognizes 121 of those. Uh, one better, one more better than a string. Now that our genes are imported into the platform and we have selected all of our genes, now we can do several different things. Uh, we can build networks with our network builder, and then we also have enrichment analysis. So that would be looking for pathways or overrepresented biological units uh, within our data set. Um, to start with, though, I'm going to look at Network Builder. So that will be kind of a, similar to String, where you're building that graph, showing the connections between the different genes. Um, this is You can have several options for this. You have direct interactions, common regulators, common targets. Um, you can look for specific interactions if you'd like. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I put all. I use the defaults, so I'm getting any interaction I can. But they do have to be direct. Um, this usually takes a while and obviously has to go through their very deep uh, publication database. So I have already done this and I have that set up right here. It's a cell cycle stuff. But what is interesting is now that we have it, you know, based on its cellular location, now we can start seeing about, you know, some of these things on the outside. Is there something signaling to create all this? And certain things start popping up. This receptor, which I have a hard time saying, hyaluronin, hyaluronin mediated mobility receptor, seems to be kind of in the middle connected to a lot of this mess. We can click on some of these lines and you can see what it's connected to. Um, cyclin B, you know, some of the big hitters. We're also seeing new regulin one, um, seems to be on the outside. Maybe this is a signaling molecule for this um, for this aggressive cancer. We're also seeing TNF-SF-13B. This is another receptor, or actually it's a, a, a chemokine. But again, potentially, now that we see it, you know, based on its localization, now we can start kind of seeing, you know, what is the signaling network behind this? And is some of these things on the outside, could we potentially block that to affect what's going on down here? Again, I, I love the fact that you're able to display these genes as a function of its cellular location and that um, when we're going to start looking at some of these other clusters, they won't necessarily be in the nucleus. A lot of them, a lot of these clusters are have the majority of its genes on the outside of the cell. So these would be secreted proteins. Uh, some clusters we'll see will have some in the Golgi apparatus. So again, this, is, this gives us an idea 
this is just a kind of an overview of, of what our genes are doing, how are they connected, and where are they located in the cell. For more specific information, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original list of genes, and we're going to use some of these other tools. So this would be the pathway tools. So when I click on this, we click on Enrichment Analysis of Selected Entries. That'll pop up. Now there's several different options you can use on this. Um, for the pathway analysis, uh, basically we can just select this. Um, this is finding groups, curated pathways, and curated groups. So these are what the experts say. Um, it works similar to what you found in uh, String or any other other programs, David, etc. Um, it's just they're all drawing off pretty much the same ontology categories. But they will also have special ones that Pathway Studio has developed as well that you can use. Uh, I'm just going to use this one. Um, this takes a while, so I'm not going to actually run it. Um, we also have other options that I want to go over real quick. We have subnetworks, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, so again, we can. what it'll do is basically it's similar to Ingenuity Pathway Analysis um, uh, upstream regulator function. So what you can do is you can click expression targets and pull out genes that have overrepresented expression targets in our 130 genes. And just like IPA, you don't necessarily have to measure this directly in order to identify it. A lot of the key things that are going on in cells uh, happen without transcription. So it's a modification to the protein itself. Think P53 and translocating to the nucleus. So I think this is a very important uh, function to have. So I'm going to go over expression targets. I'll go over chemical expression targets, which is looking for chemicals that actually affect genes in our list, which is obviously important in cancer. Uh, we can potentially uh, identify uh, therapies out there that might work on our gene list or on this particular form of cancer. Um, I'm also going to go into disease biomarkers. So do any of these genes have mutations in any other diseases? And especially in cancer, I'm almost positive they do. So that's another thing we can use. And we can also look at, um, I think that's the only one I go over. So let's do that. So what I'm going to first go over is the pathways. And as if we remember in string, we saw a lot of cell cycle stuff. And I'm sure we're going to see the same thing. So let's do that right now. Go to our first window here, pathways groups. I select that. And then I'm just going to open up my window a bit so we can see it a little bit. Given down below are some of the biological groups and pathways that were overrepresented in our gene list. and if you remember back from our string analysis, this looks fairly similar. Uh, lots of cell cycle stuff. We're seeing kinetic core assembly. And then we're actually seeing, again, that folate biosynthesis, again, uh, having to do with the nucleotides. Um, what's also showing up here is we're getting kind of subgroups or, or smaller groups. Um, a lot of EGFR, epidermal growth factor signaling, which, you know, if you know anything about cancer, that's usually associated with it. We're seeing uh, neuregulin 1 again. Um, again, you know, G2 to M transition phase. This is a lot of cell cycle stuff. Um, if we wanted to actually look at some of these pathways closer, what we can do is let me pull this window down here. Uh, what you would do is double click on that. So cell cycle overview, I'll double click on that. And here is the pathway it's using. I can zoom in here a little bit. In the yellow are some of the biological attributes associated with that part of the pathway. And again, our genes of interest are here. These are all the genes that were found within this pathway. And we can actually go and select some of the others. We can look at the EGFR. EGFR is in the middle. We did not measure this directly. Uh, I, Rarely do I see it, it change in this type of cancer, but again, we're seeing genes associated with it in our list, and therefore it's bringing this up. Um, so that would be the pathway view. Now what we can do is we can actually specialize into more subcellular networks. So let's go to the first one, which will give us kind of that upstream regulator uh, type interactions. 
If we look down here, we can see some of these upstream master regulators that uh, Pathway Studio has identified in our 130 genes. Again, a lot of these we don't measure directly, we, but we know they're there because they, things that they're known to interact with are way overrepresented in our list. Uh, and here are the p-values for that overlap. Um, APC, this is a very uh, well-known regulator of cell cycle. And you can see all the connections it's making to our genes in our list, which are given here. Um, so I would say that this molecule might be involved in our system, and uh, maybe this is a modulation point that we can use to potentially control it. Look down here again, Fox M1, I think we actually do measure that directly. Uh, MIB like 2, um, and Aurora kinase A again, and we can look at there. So again, Aurora kinase A, we measured it increasing in our more severe forms of papillary renal cell carcinoma. It clustered with these genes that are also known to interact with it, and the odds of that happening are 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th by random chance. So again, this is a kind of a good way to, you know, I would say a lot of these things are probably some of, you know, these are the modulation points that we might be looking at. These are our potential targets to modulate the system. We can go to chemicals. Let me expand this here. Um, and if you look at these, these are all anti-cancer agents. So they have been used in other cancers before, but I doubt they've been in, used in kidney. We can click on this first one, MG132. So again, this is giving you an idea of, hey, is there any chemicals out there that might modulate these genes? And, in, in, and if so, in what way? So you can see that here. Here are some of the genes that it's associated with. The thing is, is that if you would use it, you would want to make sure that it actually is doing what you expect it to do, not upregulating these potential oncogenes. But again, this is another level of analysis, using all this expression data, this cluster that we've got, to now try to pull out things that can actually affect its expression. Uh, and the last one I'll go over, again, mutations. So these were... Did we find any genes in our 130 that are normally mutated in other diseases? And sure enough, if we look here, the disease markers, cancer, neoplasm, brain cancer, you know, what we found are, are definitely associated with cancer. And we can look at some of these, that some of these had 44 genes that were known to be mutated in cancer. We could look at those. We could potentially look at maybe, say, renal cancer itself and see if any of these genes have been known to be mutated previously in renal cancer. But again, I, I think this just gives you a, a general overview. What this is telling me, number one, is that this worked, that this cluster we pulled out is enriched for biological interactions, and that some of these, and by diving into this these interactions, maybe we can pull out some potential, you know, main players in this in this, in this system. This concludes part five of our rare cancer meta-analysis series. In our next section, what I will do is take these same 130 genes and import them into Correlation Engine. So this is the program we use to actually pull out all our data for our meta-analysis. What we're going to do now is import it back into its mom and see what Correlation Engine has to say. Um, it has some really excellent um, knockout studies that it can draw from and uh, chemical studies which will actually will give us more information on on what these genes are doing i will also use cohort analyzer which is also a, from the uh, lumina suite of tools to look at some of the clinical data associated with some of these key genes that we pull out so in our next section we're just going to we're going to refine our analysis even more and start pulling out some potential chemicals and targets that we might use to modulate this system. Until next time, thank you very much.